Webflow's new variable mode feature is a game changer. Here's a deep dive of how to use it and some common mistakes we can run into. Inside the variable panel, we now have collections for sorting our variables. Inside each collection, we can create modes. Let's create a mode that's automatically applied whenever we're on the tablet breakpoint, and we'll call this our tablet mode. Now we can update the value of any of these variables, and it will only affect the tablet breakpoint on down. Now Webflow is reapplying the value to each of these variables on the tablet breakpoint, even if we didn't change the value. This creates a lot of unused CSS, so what would be better is to create a separate collection for any of our responsive variables. That's variables that change on each breakpoint. We'll create a new collection here called responsive, and we'll head back over to our base collection and hit select. From here, we want to select our font size group and container group, and we'll go ahead and move them over to our new responsive collection. So inside this responsive collection is where we'll want to create our responsive modes. We'll create an automatic mode for tablet called tablet, and we'll also create an automatic mode for landscape called landscape. And we can do the same thing for portrait if we'd like. Now we can change the value on each breakpoint here. So we'll make it even smaller here on landscape, and we'll do the same thing for each of these font sizes here. And I'll also do the same thing for my top and bottom container padding and my left and right container padding as well. And I've already applied these padding horizontal and vertical variables to the actual container element here. So what we should notice is if we head to the tablet breakpoint, those values automatically reduce and they reduce again here on landscape. Color themes are another great use case for variable modes. We can create a collection here called theme. And inside of that, let's create a variable for our section's background color. We'll create one for our section's text color. And let's create a few variables for our button. So we'll put this in a folder of button. We'll have a background color for it. It'll have its own border color and its own text color. We also need to define the hover colors for this. So it's background when hover and its border color when we hover and also its text color when we hover. Now let's define the colors of these variables in light mode. So the section background color will be light and its text color will be dark. Let's make the button's background color dark and its border should match that and its text color can be light. And whenever we hover this button, we'll change its background and border over to this brand color and its text color over to this dark color. Now let's create a new mode. This will be a manual mode and we'll call this our dark mode. And here we can start updating the value of these. So our section background can be dark and its text color can be light. And then for our button, let's go ahead and change its background and border to be brand by default. And we'll make its text color dark. And we'll also go ahead and change its hover to be light and its text color can be dark. So now that we have that set, let's start applying some of these variables. And we'll notice that the variable name actually includes the collection name. So this is underscore theme, which is the name of the collection, three dashes, and then the variable name, background. And if we take a look at one that's inside of a folder, we'll notice we still have underscore theme, three dashes, the folder name, two dashes, and then the variable name. So it does get a little bit longer for the variable names to have them in folders. I like to have them directly inside the collection when possible. Now let's head over to the body and we'll go to body all pages tag and we'll go ahead and apply a background to our body of theme background and a text color of theme text. And let's also go ahead and select this button and we'll set its background color over to button background. We'll set its border over to button border and we'll set its text to button text. And whenever we hover on this button, we'll change its background over to the background hover, its border over to border hover, and its text over to text hover. And now that we have that set, let's try switching the theme on the body. So we'll create a class called uTheme Dark, and we'll go ahead and attach a variable mode to this class. This will have a theme of dark. And when we do that, notice the button's color and its hover has changed here. And the body color has changed before it had a light background with dark text. And now with that class applied, it's going to have a dark background and light text. Now, if we try and use this theme dark on maybe a section instead of the whole body, 
We'll notice if we apply this class here, the button's color changed, but the section background color did not, and neither did its text color. And if we look at that, that's because the section doesn't have a background and its text color is just inheriting from the body and the body text is dark. So one thing we could do is manually apply our theme background and theme text to this section before switching its mode. Because if we just switch the mode alone to dark, it's only affecting those child elements. It's not affecting this parent till we actually apply that theme color to it. But one thing I like to do is just attach the background color uh, directly to the theme dark because most of the time when we switch a theme, we also want to see it on the background and text color of that element. So once we apply those, now we can use this theme dark uh, class on any sort of element and it'll automatically switch the background color of the element. We can still, of course, override this on the individual section to any other text or background color, but it's going to default to that theme uh, sort of background and text. When possible, I would try to avoid applying modes to a custom class like this because Webflow stores all the variables for that mode on that class. Right now we just have a few variables, but when we get more for theme link colors and card colors, this could quickly bloat our CSS. Instead, we could apply those modes to a reusable class like this theme light and just apply this theme light anywhere we need our light mode. This can save some CSS. There may be still a few cases where we'll need to manually change the theme across breakpoints and use a custom class for that, but using utilities can help a lot. Now, some sites will need different brand colors that they can swap out. And to do that, we can create a collection here called brand. And inside of that, let's go ahead and create a color and we'll add a few modes. These will be manual modes for brand two and another for brand three. And we can start applying our different swatches here. So I'll apply my first brand swatch, the second brand swatch, and the third one. Now, whenever we're using text on top of these colors, these two colors will need dark text on top of them to pass accessibility, but this first one will need light text. Now to handle that, we can go ahead and create a text variable here. And the name of this variable is brand text. The other ones are brand color. So let's go ahead and set this to our swatch light whenever we're using this brand color. And for these, we'll go ahead and set them over to swatch dark. So if we ever change this brand color in the future, we can globally update every text color that's used on top of this. So now we can swap out these dynamic brand colors inside of our themes. So inside of light mode, our buttons hover color instead of using brand two can use our dynamic brand color. It can be any three of the brand colors. And the text, whenever we're hovering this button, will be brand text. That means it can be light or dark, depending on the brand that we're using. And the default state of this button when inside dark mode can also use this dynamic brand color for both its background and its border. And the text color can be this dynamic text color. Now we might also want a secondary text color inside of our section. This can be like an accent color for certain words. And for that, we could try and use our dynamic brand color, but it might not be accessible on top of this light background. We could create darker shades of each of these inside this by adding a new variable. But for now, inside of light mode, I'll just go ahead and apply this sort of, um, we'll go ahead and apply maybe a swatch of dark secondary. So it's a little bit lighter than the main text color. Now inside of dark mode, this is where we'll make this highlighted color really shine and we'll use our dynamic brand color so that can swap out. So now we'll go ahead and apply this text secondary to a certain heading inside of this section. We'll create a class of view text color secondary and we'll go ahead and set this text color to be our dynamic theme text. That means inside of dark mode, it'll be this brand color. But if we apply that same theme text inside of um, light mode, we'll notice it's just a more highlighted version of the main text color. So now we we'll want to try and switch out this brand color. And I'm going to do this on this button wrap for starters. We'll notice if we switch the brand to brand two, nothing's actually changing. Now, if I have a div inside here and I set its background to reference the brand color, the dynamic brand color directly, we'll notice that this div is actually changing in color when I swap out any of the brands. But the buttons aren't changing because they're not referencing the brand color directly. Instead, they're referencing the button variables, which were applied inside of our theme. 
So the theme here is set on the entire section. And when we set that theme on the section, it grabs whatever brand color was at the time. In this case, it was purple. And it uses that from that point on. Now, if we reapply our dark mode, now we'll notice that the brand color actually switches, but we want this, this dark mode to inherit from the mode of the parent. So we're gonna go ahead and clear that out here and we'll clear out our brand here. Instead, we wanna make sure that we're applying the brand wherever we set the theme uh, color of the section. In this case, it's on the whole section. And that way it changes everything. It's changing the heading word. It's changing the text color of the button as, long, as well as its background color. So all that's changing out. And we can also set the brand on an even higher parent if we want. So if we set the brand on maybe the whole body, I'll go ahead and set brand to two over here. That should change everything. So it's changing the hover color inside of uh, light mode. It's also changing everything inside dark mode. Um, so this is changing the color, the brand color for all sections for the entire page. Um, or we can change it for individual sections. Now, ideally, instead of applying the brand here and the theme here, we would be using utilities like U theme light or maybe U brand two and we'd use those reusable classes to define our brands and themes. One last great use case for modes is using modes for text style. So we can create a collection called text style. Usually we don't use font size alone. Usually the larger our font size gets, the tighter its line height and letter spacing gets, the more bold it is. So we can use those collection of styles together to create a font style. So the first will be font size, the next might be font family, the next one can be a unitless number for line height. We can have another number for font weight, and we can have a size variable for letter spacing. And we can add anything else to this, like if we want a size for margin top and margin bottom, and that could be different across each size level. So this base mode here is going to be for the body and the paragraphs. So we can set this to our default most used sort of style here. 1.5 line height, the font weight can be 500, and the letter spacing can be 0M. But now we can create a mode for each of our different styles. Maybe we have a paragraph large or an H6. In this case, I'll skip to my H2, and we'll go ahead and change the font size on it. We'll keep the font family being inherited, and that way if we change this family here, it'll change for each of the other ones as well. And we can also change the line height here to something a little more uh, tight like so. And then we'll make the font more bold and we'll also tighten up the letter spacing like so. And then let's also create a mode for our H1 and the font size will be a little bit larger here. The line height will be even tighter than the H2. Uh, the weight can stay the same as the H2 and the letter spacing can stay the same. Now, if we want these font sizes to be responsive, we would need to connect them to, in our responsive folder, these different responsive font sizes. We create it that update for each breakpoint. So here we would go back to our text style and let's go ahead and apply for our base mode, that font size main, and then for our H2, that H2 font size and H1 would be the H1 font size. And even if we were using custom code with fluid font sizes, we would still need separate variables for each of these because this is just one variable here called text style font size. So we can't apply three separate values to it. So what we would need to do instead is just like we have here, create a separate font size that can be made fluid and then apply that for each of these different modes here. So now that we have that set, let's go ahead and apply these. So we'll head over to the body all pages tag and we'll go ahead and set uh, the font family to the text style font family, the weight to text style font weight, the size can be text style font size, letter spacing or line height can be this one and the letter spacing will be that letter spacing value here. So this is all defaulting to the text main style. So we don't need to apply any kind of base mode. It's already set. So it's already gonna have the base styles, but we can change this to H2. Notice it updates all of the paragraphs inside or H1 and it's updating the line height, everything related to this collection of styles here. Now we can go ahead and apply that to maybe this H1 here 
And I find the fastest way to apply it is it's already inheriting this value from the body. We just need to reapply this textile font family. So if we click and hit our enter key, it'll reapply and we can just do that for each of these values. So I'll go ahead and reset this one. I'll click and press the enter key. It already has the correct variable selected. Here we'll reset, we'll click, press enter, and that's a fast way to just reapply the textile sort of variable. So once all of those are reapplied, now we can go ahead and set this uh, mode over to H1 like so, and we have all of that set. So if we're using an H1, but we want it to look like an H2, we can easily just switch the mode that we're using on it. Or if we want to change this across breakpoints, maybe for some specific reason we were using an H1, but on a certain breakpoint we want to switch it all to H2, we can easily do that here. Before it would be really tedious to manually reapply the H2 variables for each of these, but with modes it makes it super easy. Lastly, let's look at how to connect these modes to component props. The way that creates the cleanest code would be to create a class like uThemeDark and attach the theme to that. And then we would use that class under settings as a class attribute. And that way we can just reuse this class across multiple sections. And we can connect that to a component field, maybe called theme. And that way on the entire component, we can switch the theme between light, dark, or any other theme that we might have. Now, if you don't want to have to remember the class name exactly, then we could use component variants instead. Now, I would still recommend by starting with something like uTheme Light or Dark, whichever one should be the default, because it's going to save some code, meaning that that style is already applied in the class, and we don't have to reapply some of the stuff. The thing that we will need to reapply is switching over to Dark Mode, or the opposite theme. So we'll create a variant here called Dark, and we'll go ahead and change our theme over to dark mode on this variant. So that's adding a little new CSS to our project just to switch to dark. And then we'll rename this first one to light and we'll rename this variant to be theme. And this way we get a nice drop down to switch between light and dark on the whole component. So that's a high level overview of how to use variable modes. I hope this tutorial helps you get started in your project.